everybody. Good morning. Spitborn, Ed, Jan, John, Kenneth, Mark, Francois, Kevin, Robert, Gaten. Good to see everybody. Get started a little early and happy Good Friday. The market is closed as far as stocks go, but crypto never sleeps. So that crypto market always open, never stops, never pauses, and it's completely independent. Like there's no centralized control of any of it. Well, I mean, unless a crypto is controlled centrally. I mean, that's, that's kind of the funny funny thing about a lot of the altcoins. You know, JT, what's your favorite altcoin? I'm not sure I have one. I mean, everything tries to be, okay, we're, we're going to take the concept of Bitcoin, except we're going to make XYZ better. Or except we're going to take, we're going to take the distributed nature of Bitcoin and we're going to make a centralized control so that prices are more stable. What the fudge are you even talking about? I mean... That's just ridiculous. Uh, we're going to take the the primary benefits of Bitcoin and we're going to take them away to make it better. Um, what the heck? Anyway, um, you know, Bitcoin versus gold. I've been, I was teasing about this a little bit yesterday. When you look at uh, the monetary scarcity, you know, like one, of the, one of the monetary properties of money is scarcity. Arguably dollars not scarce whatsoever when you can just push a button you know write some debt whatever it is move this over this you know the the you know they keep saying well our solution is just to to create a multi trillion dollar coin put that in the national vault and we solve all our problems we can just create that money and throw it out there it's not the way this works it's not the way it works at all now, for every dollar of money that is issued, that goes into a bank, the bank loans it out, The that money comes back, the bank loans it out again, holding the reserve, and money tends to tends to expand, you know, in dollar, when I say money, dollar money, like central bank issued money, tends to expand 10 to 1, 10 to 12 to 1 on the ratio in the actual economy. So... That elasticity has gotten smaller recently where one dollar thrown out there isn't getting us large monetary growth of the available money supply. Now, gold arguably has around 6.8 billion ounces of mined gold that we've mined in the last like 4,000 years or so since humans have figured out that gold exists and our annual current annual production rate about 118 million ounces of gold. So roughly that's 60 years to of mining capacity for one year to replace or to double the entire global supply. Bitcoin has about 19.66 million coins on the market and we're limited to, to 20. 1 million, 21 million. That's all there's ever going to be. And that means we have about 1.33 million left to go. And the way the, the way the mining rate works, it's going to be about 140 more years, roughly 2140. Well, I guess that's 120 more years, you know, 2140 roughly before we see that last Bitcoin completely mined out. So, Bitcoin supply is only going to grow about 7% over the next 116 years or so. That's pretty wild, right? When you think about it. I mean, so gold is scarce, but Bitcoin more scarce. And as I was talking about yesterday, when the price of gold goes up, that creates the ability for more people to go chase the gold. When you think about it, a gram of gold worth like, 60 bucks right now at the current prices. And if it goes up double, it makes it like 120 bucks for a gram of gold, like a gram. That's like a paper clip's worth. You know, Bitcoin right now, you can divide it all the way down to a Satoshi. And that's like one fifteenth of a penny right now. So much more divisible with Bitcoin. But as prices of gold go up, it, creates the opportunity for more people to use diesel fuel and gasoline and you know all the things you need to go 
dig up and find more gold. That increases the supply. Bitcoin, the more people that participate, the, the harder, the, the way the algorithm is, the harder it is to mine Bitcoin. So you can throw, you can be like, I'm going to go throw, you know, $15 million into buying equipment. And you put that equipment online and then automatic, like you, you kind of take away because of the nature of the algorithm, the way a block is mined out about every 10 minutes. And then the, the difficulty is adjusted every two weeks. Your brand new capacity that you put on the online, it's absorbed into the system and the system rebalances after two weeks. And it's still, you get one block mined about every 10 minutes. One block reward, currently 6.25 Bitcoins every 10 minutes on average. And as soon as we get the halving, this event known as halving, where the payout rate for mining a block of Bitcoin is going to be cut in half, we're going from, from 6.25 Bitcoins to 3.125 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. That's a supply cut. Now, what's, what's interesting here, I was talking about the current mining rate of gold replacing, you know, doubling the entire supply of gold in 60 years. Right now, the current rate of Bitcoin, the you know, not considering having or anything like that, the current rate, 6.25 Bitcoins hitting the market every 10 minutes, you know, being mined out, that rate is 57 years. Now, the halving event coming up in just a few days, literally a few days, we've got April 19th, roughly, that rate of Bitcoin creation drops to 3.125, which doubles essentially, the time it takes to replace the entire supply. So now, for the first time ever, we will have a period where something takes longer to replace the entire scarce supply than gold. Gold is always kind of hang, hung around 60 years. You know, that's kind of like, since we've been kind of keeping track. Now, all of a sudden, Bitcoin is going to double that. It's going to be like 120 years. How this is when everybody talks about this having is different, it is fundamentally different because all of a sudden Bitcoin becomes the most scarce commodity on the planet as far as new Bitcoin coming onto the market. And there's no way to increase the rate at which new Bitcoin comes onto the market. The last several days we have seen, you know, for I think for three weeks now, we've seen the spot ETFs buying more Bitcoin than is produced per day. Now, is that going to continue? Quite possibly. If they keep the mantra, the retirement account mantra, 1% allocation and just BlackRock's numbers, $12 trillion under management, that's $120 billion would go into Bitcoin and they're only at like $11 billion. So we're talking about, you know, 10 times more money and crazy. I mean, just when you really look at the, the, the thing of it, I mean, it's just kind of wild. I mean, we talk about, well, what about platinum? What about palladium? What about other rare metals? Well, right now that, that ratio of replacement, we're at a 0. 0.4 right now. It only takes us 0. 0.4 years to, to produce the entire of stock of platinum. As the price goes up, the mining increases as the price comes down, mining decreases. And that's, that's the thing about commodities. The cure for high prices in commodities is higher prices. But Bitcoin is a unique commodity where that doesn't hold true. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should go out and buy Bitcoin. No, no, no. I mean, like, it's not very liquid. I mean, let's be honest. A supply squeeze is likely to occur and we could see prices go crazy high and then come crashing right back down. It is risky. It is volatile. I just want to bring home some points here though today that I haven't really talked about all in one time, all in one place. So we have the gold market, roughly $14 trillion market cap. That's pretty liquid. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of gold out there that everybody can go get a little piece of. Bitcoin, we're only about 1 trillion, you know, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, you know, about a tenth the size, just eclipsing silver a little bit. 
Gold's more liquid right now. Uh, gold's always going to be more liquid. There's always going to be more gold available for people to get a piece of. But the portability of gold, like how do you transact in gold? How do you keep your gold from getting stolen? Um, somebody can just walk up to you with a knife and give me your gold. Well, okay. Can't really do that with Bitcoin. Um, you can't even see the Bitcoin. Like, how do you know I have Bitcoin? How do you know you have Bitcoin? So definitely, there's definitely some properties here that, you know, could be different. So, yeah. So the SEC has named Bitcoin a commodity and temporarily named Ethereum a commodity, but the SEC has a an investigation going right now where they may, they may change their category of what they consider Ethereum to be. It may change to a security. Would that wreck Ethereum? I don't know. So yeah, Kathy Wood saying that possibly we see 3.8 million. I, I think we see a million dollars of Bitcoin, but probably not till the 2030s. Now we could get some kind of super squeeze that pops us up there and then we come right back down. But my projection is that I we don't see a million dollars of Bitcoin till another two halvings. All right. So here's the supply of Bitcoin right here. Circulating supply, 19.667 million Bitcoins. If you were to own one Bitcoin right now, that would be like owning 300 and... I think it's 382 ounces of gold. Now, gold is commonly transferred between central banks in 400 ounce bars, giant, huge, heavy bars. If you were to own one of those bars worth of Bitcoin, you'd own about 1.23 Bitcoins. That's the kind of money we're getting into right now. A lot of people say it's still a scam, still a Ponzi, still a you know hack, like still fluff. Look, this thing's 15 years old. We're going through the fourth having event. And gold keeps climbing. I mean, so Bitcoin keeps climbing. This ladder right here, bigger than silver and only about one-tenth the size of gold. Hard to say it's a Ponzi. Hard, hard for me to agree at all that that's a Ponzi. Now... Could it eventually blow out and get hacked and whatever? You know, welcome to the scam. I mean, could eventually. Entirely possible. I'm not looking at this like long term, but as I've talked about before, Bitcoin is kind of a credit default swap against the entire fiat system blowing out. And as we look at the numbers right here, let's refresh and make sure we got the current most... Freshest numbers here. Bitcoin is 52.1% of all the money that's tied up in crypto. Ethereum rep representing 16%. So combine those together, that's 68% right now of the entire crypto market is tied up in the top two. If you want to focus on something like I talk about, focus on the top two. Now, that does that mean there's not opportunity down here? No. If you're a trader... Play down here. If you're going to trade them, play down here. If you're thinking that one of these is going to rise up and take the top, it's unlikely at this point. There's a moat built around these up here. That moat for Ethereum may get a leaky hole if the SEC changes their categori categorization. Could take a hit. But as far as Bitcoin goes, the moat is wide. It's deep. I mean, 52% right there. It's a pretty deep and wide. And look, there's 2.4 million cryptos. See that right there? 2.4 million, that top number right up in there in the upper left. Maybe we have space in the world for a couple hundred, maybe a thousand but not 2.4 million. Most of those are complete scams, complete crap. All right. So when we talk about the crypto market, let's be specific. Most of it is complete crap. Most of it's probably just trying to take your money. 
I mean, it's just like everything else out there. There's stocks in the stock market that are complete scams. Bitcoin, though, seems to have that, at this point, it's inarguable. It has institutional backing. We have spot ETFs. We have billions of dollars poured into this thing. And in fact, soon to be trillions. We got 1.38 trillion right there at the current prices. And there's no central control. So these, these are key differences here. Ethereum has centralized control. And that's one of the key points that the SEC is hinging on that possibly it's a security instead of a commodity. Because it can just be fundamentally changed by a small group of people that push through a change. That's not the way stores of value work. Now, for those of you that are when I say credit default swap against the whole fiat system, if you haven't seen my stuff that I talked about months and months ago, a credit default swap. So when you, when you extend credit, right? You're giving, and when you extend credit, you're a creditor. When you borrow, you're a debtor. And the U.S. government, debt clock, let's just pull up the debt clock right here. If you haven't seen this before, I've pulled it up a few times lately. Here's our current national debt as the headline, the headline debt, 34 trillion, 34.6 trillion. All right. That's not the whole story. The whole story comes in when we look at this. $214 trillion of money we've promised to people. $214 trillion. And I think you add this one on top of that one. So it gets to be ridiculous numbers. Now, Bitcoin right now, only 1 trillion. Our entire monetary base, the US dollars are backing this much money right here. This unfunded liability, this national debt, like US dollars are are backed by this right here. What if this blows out? What if the bill comes due? Look, the assets right here. Assets per capita, $559,000 per citizen. Young and old, brand new, on the deathbed. $559,000 of assets combined or up against $663,000 of debt. We're in a debt spiral. This is growing. This is shrinking. This number's shrinking. Look, assets shrinking. This one's growing. These numbers are in a debt spiral. We have a serious problem and nobody's taking it seriously. What happens? What happens? Hyperinflation happens when this gets out of control to the point where it runs away. That's where it takes a wheelbarrow of $100 bills to go buy a loaf of bread. What kind of thing is priced in U.S. dollars right now that can fight against this? You got gold and a close second Bitcoin. Coming up soon, it may be Bitcoin and a close second gold. Oil the production of oil can go up greatly when the price climbs. There's enough oil in the world to supply the world for like 300 more years at the current demand. They want to bake the numbers like it's not, but and we keep finding more supply, funny enough. The more that we pretend like it's scarce, the more, and the higher the prices go, the more oil we see, we tend to find. And the higher the prices of oil, the more affordable it is to go get the harder to find and harder to get oil. And that's kind of the way gold is too. We don't actually know how much gold is in the, in the world. It's 
estimated there's about a trillion more ounces that we could mine out. And if you bring in an asteroid that's covered in gold and platinum, that plummets the price of gold and platinum. And you may be like, well, that's not possible right now. Well, it's one of the things Elon Musk is working on how to do that, how to go get scarce metals, how to go get an asteroid full of lithium, how to go get an asteroid full of cobalt, how to go get an asteroid full of gold, platinum, silver. So these are uh, some crazy things. Now, before we talk about actual projections and stuff like that, all training involves a substantial risk of loss, past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results, just because I predicted it before, doesn't mean I'll ever get another one right again. This presentation here, intended to be informational, educational, fun, and entertaining. It's not a recommendation to buy any or sell any financial instruments. No stocks, no options, no bonds, no forex, no futures, no cryptos, no treasuries. Don't buy them, don't trade them. Don't long them, don't short them. If you desire personal financial advice, personal financial advice, hiring a financial advisor, and jump it over here. Let's pull up the Crypto Power Place. I, I run something called Crypto Power Place. And I go through a ton of cryptos every week. In fact, the list is 70 right now. Was 72, I knocked a couple off. Now, this is not the Crypto Power Place. I've got that on the market roadmap here, not on the Crypto Power Place layout. So you're not gonna see the targets and stuff I have for those members. But when we look down in here, we look down in here, Bitcoin has set up a market roadmap bounce. It was a, it was a four hour, well, yeah, four hour bounce. We retraced, we held, moved up, higher low, moved up above the 618. We are now 70% likely to take a visit right up here. And if I had this tightened up, and this is the dollar index for our, the, US, the Bitcoin dollar index done by TradingView. They have an Easter sale right now. I think the coupon code Easter 2024. If you're interested, I don't get anything off of that. But if you're a member of anything of mine and you want to continue being that and use TradingView for alerts and whatever it is, they have a 70% off sale right now, just like their Black Friday sale. You can go buy a whole year for like 200 bucks. Super affordable. If you're going to actually be serious about this and use this and you can, you don't have to buy any data. You don't have to subscribe to any data, anything like that. No add on subscription, no nothing. Just buy the premium membership. You can get 400 alerts, 400 technical alerts, load as many indicators you want on the chart, do all the things I do. And you could, you could buy the lower level. It doesn't require the high level, but that's out there right now ends on the 31st so you got two days left to go but this right here bitcoin has set a pattern and we're highly likely to go hit that 77,000 level right there and it, lower probability to hit 81 but 81 is the next 81 82 if we're going to do it usually we go like this and then we go like this that's the typical pattern. We could just blast it right on up here with all the excitement we've been seeing in the crypto market. Now you'd be like, well, how do you know this is what the pattern is? Because we do it over and over and over. We did one back here. Did a little bit smaller one right here. It was really quick, really fast. Gotta get it on the right time scale. See this one right here? If you want the market roadmap line, if you want it, you want this stuff, it's five bucks in the description down below. See that pullback? Came up, did the higher bounce, busted above the 618, consolidated, out to the 1272, retraced back to the 100, went for the 1618, didn't make it and retraced. Didn't quite make it right there. So the 1618, not always a given. That's why it's only 35, 40% likely that we just blast on up there. This one, 70% likely. 
trade for the high probability trades, wait for the setups. You can make pretty dang good money doing this. This is, this is how I make my predictions. I use this on all different time frames, all different ways. This is the basis, the very basic basis of what I do. There's several levels. And you know, when I'm when when people join my Termite Trading Labs VIP group, I tell them to learn this. Number one, learn this roadmap system. Number two, go watch the Fib class and see what I add on to this system. Number three, I did an in-person event in January that deep dives into more of this stuff. Watch that. Number four, learn Echo Trades, and you learn the in intermediate moves inside here, all combines together, and then you can pretty much do any of the price predicting that I do. Now, I look at 100 charts, some days, hundreds of charts a day. So if you don't do this, you know, and practice this every day, you're, it's just like, do you, do you hire the plumber that just got his plumbing certificate to come replumb your entire house? No. I mean, do you hire the knee surgeon that just got out of medical school and just, you know, just opened his practice? He's on his, you know, hundredth knee ever first one that uh, he's not working under another surgeon for. That's not the one you want. You want the guy that did 10,000 last year. He's good at this, right? You want the guy that, that's, uh, so that's why you're here. That's why you're subscribed, hopefully. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the alert, the bell with the notifications when I go live. So you get all these predictions. Now, Ethereum has done something more bearish. When we look at this move here, and we throw it on like the four hour, right? Same four hour chart that Bitcoin has. We run that Fib line, the high to the low. Look at this right here. We have not broken above that resistance. We made the higher low, made a higher low, have not yet broken above that resistance. That still sets this up bearish. This is still the makings of a correction, an intermediate correction that could go lower. Things to watch, this uptrend of lows. If we break below there, that starts really tilting the hand that we're going on lower. How much lower could it go? Right now, could be down to this 2600 level. Just based on the fibs. Look at daily, we have daily support. Oh, look. Just happens to be exactly where I just drew that oval. Coincidence? I don't know. This stuff works. So watch out for Ethereum if the SEC suddenly classified that as a security. Do we get this while Bitcoin goes higher? Now, Ethereum Classic. If you don't know all the different coins, Ethereum Classic was a split off of Ethereum back when Ethereum was still proof of work. Ethereum has become proof of stake. That means people that own Ethereum can stake down their Ethereum to verify the network. Nothing I know of in life you get for just showing up. You actually have to participate. Life's a participation sport. Bitcoin's a partic participation sport. You have to work for the Bitcoin. Ethereum, though, you just show up. You, know, you, you don't even have to actually show up. You just have to get some and plunk it down, and then you get paid to verify transactions. That's And when we go back and look, ever since they did that, it was a while back, right back in here, September, September 22, we made a bottom here in June. It was hyped and there was a lot of hype that we were going to 
blast off when this went to proof of stake and I was very skeptical. And we converted right here in September and we went down again. And only recently on the hype of Bitcoin have we gotten any kind of spark at all. But this thing right now, really not looking super awesome. That's not the kind of move that we're seeing in Bitcoin right now. So the, these things aren't exactly create equal. See, we're seeing Bitcoin all-time highs. We're seeing Ethereum lackluster. If the SEC classifies it as a security, could crush down here. And if this was a big correction that we've had from here to here, and this is still part of the correction. Ooh. That's some scary numbers. Put it in log scale. Since it's a, such a huge move, we could be talking numbers down around 700, 400. That's the risk right now. All right. That's the risk on Ethereum. Ethereum Classic, still a proof of work system. Type the right. Yeah, bit info charts. There we go. Bit info charts. That's what I'm looking for. And grab Ethereum Classic. We got Bitcoin, we got Bitcoin Cash, and we got Ethereum Classic. See the mining rate right here. The rewards for the last 24 hours. Why is it lucrative to mine? Because there was $63 million worth of Bitcoin pumped out in the last 24 hours. That's lucrative to mine. If prices hold steady after the halving, we're going to see that cut down to $30 million roughly. per day. Is that enough to support all the miners? Not at the current prices, probably. Bitcoin Cash. About $700,000 worth of Bitcoin Cash hit the market. Ethereum Classic. About half a million dollars worth of Ethereum Classic. Why not? Why isn't there more participation? Because it's only about a half a million dollars. Now, not all the cryptos are represented up here. Dogecoin right here. Everybody talks about Dogecoin. Look at that. Almost $3 million worth of Dogecoin mining. And when you mine Dogecoin, you mine Litecoin at the same time. So look at Litecoin. So really you got 3 million there plus another 300,000. So roughly, you know, $3.2 million. Well, that's pretty sweet. Litecoin is lucrative to mine. Not nearly... Of course, the competition's a lot lower over here, too. Now, when you look at the price of the coins, though, jump back over here. Come down here. Dogecoin. Look how many freaking... There's no, no limit of supply. They just keep pumping this out. No limit of supply. Pumping them out fast as fast could be. That means eventually... You know, this is like U.S. dollars right here. This is eventually going down as it gets inflated to zero. Ethereum has that pos potential and possibility too. The people in control and managing it are keeping the supply shrinking right now. But, but that could go the other way very easily with just a, a simple little change by centralized control. Like, uh, all of a sudden they're like, hey, we want more Ethereum on the market. Boom. They can put more Ethereum on the market. So this actually tells you how much of a supply of coins there are. Like Solana, there's no cap. That's a big red flag to me. Doge, no cap. And Litecoin has dropped, has kind of plummeted. It used to be higher up in here, and now it's not. Trying to make sure I don't skip it, because uh, scrolling quickly and 
Yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd Coins dropped way on down the list lately. Man, out of the top 100? I didn't see it. I'm going to go there quickly by searching for it. Oh, number 19. I skipped it. <laughs> but Litecoin, when you look at it, market cap, circulating supply, we're at 85%. So this one will this one does do having events and we will eventually hit the 84 million litecoin supply cap. But when you look at Dogecoin there is no supply cap. We just keep pumping those out Inf infinite max supply. That's not a property of money. All right. And Bitcoin Cash is a split off of Bitcoin. It is limited to the same 21 million. There are some fundamental code differences. If you really wanted to jump into the, to the no on that, you can come down here and go to the GitHub and look at the code changes, all right? These are relatively kept up to date. Last com code commit on Bitcoin yesterday. Last code commit on Bitcoin Cash back in December. The last official release, version 26, right there, December for Bitcoin. Version 27, right there, just after it, in December. The blockchain size, almost half a terabyte. And this one, about half of that size. Quarter of a terabyte. Bitcoin Cash tends to... Interestingly enough, though, the what's the key metric here is that the mining profitability, this is the one right here these use the same algorithm we see people we see miners swap back and forth between these based on which one is paying a higher rate right now you can easily swap back and forth between these no, not stupid simply easily but you know if you have the equipment you can relatively easily sw swap back and forth between these and capture the higher rate on mining so we see mining ebb and flow if you've ever wondered what the hash rate, how to find the hash rate, here you go. There's the hash rate chart on Bitcoin. What the hash rate for? Bitcoin Cash, right there it is. So these are some, these are some interesting, interesting things that are out there. I have the, uh, the Easter sale is in Discord a couple days back. I can pop it up here. It's in the announcements channel a couple days back. It was right there, Easter sale. And it's Easter 2024, all capitals. I get nothing, like I have no, I get no benefit off of that. Just throwing it out there as if you are serious about using TradingView. All right. Yeah, 19, I skipped it. I, it's the uh, side effect of me being live and not, you know, being nervous about uh, trying to keep from having dead space. So, Litecoin right there. Yeah. Uniswap also has a limit, but only 59% of it's on the market. Litecoin, 88%. Lots of these have no supply cap. That's look, some people see that as an advantage. We're going to be like Bitcoin, except we're not going to limit supply like Bitcoin does. Well, that's a fundamental reason that gives Bitcoin value is that you have limited supply. If you have unlimited supply, then you're just being like U.S. dollars or any other central bank controlled currency. It has unlimited amount out there. 
and it's hard to place value on things that have unlimited amount out there. Now, some things have a high max supply to try to keep prices relatively low because they want lots of people to be able to use it. Crypto.com's coin, Kronos, right there. One of those things. If you look up here, Binance has their own token. Unlimited supply, though. But they keep the supply limited enough that prices stay up. It's all interesting. Avalanche right here. If you didn't know, Fed now, the quasi-CBDC thing that the U.S. government built, it's built on the Avalanche network. Now, Avalanche is only running about 52% of the supply out there. And you can click on any of these and go find out more information. And they have Avalanche markets and information about the coins and all sorts of stuff in here, news and, you know, Details about how it, who it was and how it was and how it came to be and, you know, what makes it unique and all these sort of things in here. You can literally spend a lifetime researching all this stuff if you really wanted to. Because there's 2.4 million of these babies. All right. Raven coin. I had alerts going off practically all night last night. Look at that chart, though. Sideways, choppy, hot mess. But it's coming off a higher low. Could we make a higher high? Absolutely. What are we watching for? Just in the big picture, this is way lagging. You know, Bitcoin's making higher highs. This one, way lagging. We're going to have to get above this $0.09 cent area in order to look for a potential pop-up here to $0.71. Cents. Like 71 cents, holy whoop. Yeah. Look last time. We basically did the move right up to the 1618 and then retraced. And when you look at that, you look at that right there. See that move, that chop, and then the plummet back down. That's the same thing I talk about. It's that chart right there. That excitement, that euphoria, the complacency. The anxiety, denial, panic, depression. That's that same pattern. A lot of cryptos follow that same pattern. Now we're going again. For several days now, I've been saying that typically, well, when something's going to have higher value or go again, We'll make a low that's higher than the previous low. And then we'll start this cycle again. This is human psychology in a market. It's because we're all herd mentality. You can believe it or not believe it if you want. We do this over and over subconsciously. The little patterns I'm taking advantage of are taking advantage of this on different time frames. We do it all different time frames. Doge, maybe it's going to go again. Definitely held a lot higher low. It is inflationary. What are we watching for on Dogecoin? Got to get above this 27 cent, 28 cent area. This happens to be where we consolidated right back here. Same spot. We're just now coming up into it. If we could get above there, potential for this to go out to like a dollar sixty sixty. Everybody was looking for a dollar back before. We may well exceed that this cycle on Dogecoin. ADA. That one just made the lowest low. Not looking like not looking very awesome right now. When I say just, you know, we're coming off of the lowest low here. Got a long way to go to try to get above that 618 level and try to make some higher prices. A lot of work to do on ADA. Solana, this one looks a lot better here. We're already on a path. That path, that high, that low. We're already well above the 618. We're just a little bit behind Bitcoin. 681? Holy beep. That's possible.
could even be in the thousands. Low thousands, but thousands. That'd be a wild ride. It's possible. That was a potential five wave up. Deeper retrace to lower low. That's almost like an IPO. Start again. Probably come up here, consolidate, and then push higher if we're going to. XRP. Not nearly as awesome. Look, making lower highs. Lowest low back here. Ugh. This one very corrective right here. This one looks a lot like kind of like Ethereum, unfortunately. Running, using the wrong tool here. That high, that low. If that was the high, if we don't make any more higher high, could go down here. <laughs> Dot. Look, look how underperforming this is. You can see a lot of these charts look a lot the same. Way underperforming. Way below the 618. Avalanche, on the other hand. Remember that Fed Now thing. Got something going for it. Getting above the 618 here. This is one to watch. If we break down below this zone. Break down below this stuff. Probably coming back down. We can hold this up here. Sets it right up there. I have an alert up there for a reason. Potentially even up here. I do have some Avalanche. I do have Solana. I do have some Doge, very small amount. I do have Ethereum Classic. I do have Ethereum. I do have Bitcoin. I do have Matic. This one, the chart. Not looking nearly as awesome, but it does have a nested setup for going higher. This is like a, maybe it's going to go. We broke above that 618. We retraced, held a higher low. This is, this is a key here. Because we did a 618 retrace after bouncing off that 618 retrace. Now we're up in the vicinity. If we can get above this high, it's a big if, 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 if. Get above that high, which happens to be the same place we consolidated on the way down. Get above that, could pop up to 520, possibly $11. Shib, I don't even know where to talk about that one. That's uh, trying right now at that 618. We get above there, we didn't. Didn't make a weekly close. If we do, could come up to three zeros and a one seven. It's right now four, I think it's four zeros and a three oh. I mean, that's it's so such a fractional penny. And when we look at SHIB on over here, uh, let's see, SHIB is right there. You can see there's like what is that? Millions, billions, trillion, like 589 trillion of these babies. No limit on supply. Yeah, just wicked. 589 trillion total supply. No max, you know, infinity max supply. That's probably going to, you know, on the long scale, years, years time frame, that's probably going on down. Hate to break it to you if you're a big SHIB supporter, but it doesn't mean we won't see crazy moves and you know pops and drops along the way. But the long-term trend, as long as that's inflationary, is going towards zero. Add a zero, add a zero, add a zero. It's the long-term trend in the SHIB. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't pop up here and hit that number along the way. Irrational things can keep being irrational. This has a large... Move up, retrace, held a higher low. This higher low just happens to be, got to move the chart a little bit so I can, for whatever reason, wouldn't let me click down there. We held this 50% retrace. This is actually quite bullish. On the biggest time scale that I have, we're tracking this. That could set this up to go to 359. That would be pretty crazy. 
for Uniswap and much more realistic is a pop above, once we get above this 618 level here, 84, maybe 200. Possible to go to 359 or even crazier numbers like 1200. It's possible. We see a lot of crazy stuff happen in crypto. That's why having your positions in place during crypto winter is the smartest thing to do. Now we're in the pre having stage. We're going to get likely to get a run that really kicks off about 200 days after having. That's the average. Could we never look back this time? We could. Entirely possible. We never look back this time. We've got about 3,200 blocks left to go. About 21 days. And here's the block mining right here. Mem mempool.space. That block took 43 minutes in between blocks. We're actually running behind schedule here. Six blocks behind the 10-minute average. The difficulty will adjust again in 13 days. There's all the transactions that are vying for a spot in this block, the current block. Because that one took so long, we actually have a backup of transactions. You know, 3,900, 3,900, 2,300, 3,800, 1,000, 1,000, and 106,000 transactions hanging out out here. You have to pay, and Bitcoin works, you pay up to get your transaction verified. The higher you're willing to pay, the sooner you get your transaction verified. These people are not willing to pay hardly anything, so their transactions are hanging out here indefinitely. These transactions have all been verified. And occasionally we get a block where nothing gets verified. There was one, one transaction, and that was the 6.25 Bitcoin reward. That's a, a side effect of the way mining pools work. To try to maximize the return of a mining pool, the pool gets together a block with no transactions in it and throws it out there to the miners to start working on. And then it takes a few seconds later for the block to be populated with transaction, transactions and those miners to keep working on it. Occasionally, very quickly, they'll guess a solution to the block with no transactions in it. And that's what happens right here. You can see right here, it explains it. Why are there empty blocks? When a new block is found, mining pools send a blank block template with no transactions so they can start searching for the possible answer. Then they send the transactions right afterward, but it takes a few seconds. Usually no more than one to two. Sometimes they get lucky and find a block with no transactions in it. Seems inefficient, but that's kind of the way mining works. That's why that one had no transactions, except the block reward. And then because that got verified almost instantly, then later on we have this big gap, 43 minutes between blocks. And it bounces out on the hole. And like I said, right now we're running about 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes per block. So your transaction, if, you, if you're willing to pay for it, your transaction probably take about 10 minutes to get verified. Could take longer, as we saw right there, 43 minutes. Lots of small transactions in this one. Anyway, Uniswap. We get above here, likely to come up here. Sitting right at the resistance right now. Litecoin. Some of these have a longer history. Been around a while. This one on the trend. Looks like we're doing a situation where we may go retest the high and possibly extend it out this time. Go to the low. The high of the low right there. We've got a ways to go though. 168 to prove that we're going to go higher. This is nested though. This did do move up and a 618 retrace that can be a, a setup for a powerful move on the next move that would put it right up in here we may consolidate and then go on higher i've got my alert right there at the 1272 i do have some litecoin i do have some mana 
This one, this chart looking a lot less awesome. That high, that low, long way up here. We're actually sitting right at resistance. Like I said, a lot less awesome. This may only get up into here and then retrace. Anchor. Look at this one, though. Way up off the lows. Held a much higher retrace here. Look at that. Held above the 50% retrace. That's actually pretty productive. We're going higher. Here's the breakout level above this 7.78 cent area. Possibly 44 cents. $1.13, way on up there. Now, I also, in my crypto power plays, look at a lot of miners and other crypto-related tickers. Long list right there. Some other cryptos we're going to hit, and we're going to wrap up here in just a minute. I'll just hit a few more of the interesting ones, ones that I think are interesting. Crow here. This one plummeted down, made a low. This is kind of like an IPO kind of chart. We've got a long way up to go. 31 cents is this resistance area. We may not break above 31 cents, but if we did, we could extend up to $2.22, possibly $6. You can see I've got alerts up here. Very optimistic, but we may see that breakout. Another one that's been absolutely nuts since it came out of the market is COSPA. Look at this. It hadn't even... Not even a little bit of retrace. I do mine. I have Cospa Miner running. It just It's an ASIC that mines Cospa. Where is this one going to pull back? That's a, there's no, no real way to tell. And it's just straight up at this point. Supports all the way down here. All right. So not all cryptos created equal. That's the big takeaway here. X Stellar Lumens has caught on wicked retraces. I mean, wicked moves and wicked retraces, both of the prior halvings. This is one that has an opportunity. Look right here. We nested a 618 setup. We didn't go on a big extension the last time, but we did get a multi-thousand percent move up. Yeah, look at that. 29... 100% move up. Could we do that again? It's potentially possible. It's all possible. This could be the, could have needed a long retrace for a windup. This one could pop to $1.94 from 14 cents. That's more than 10 times your money, potentially. This one has been a repeat, all right? This one's been around for a few having cycles. Been a repeat gainer. Popped here, popped here. Do we pop again? I don't know. I just thought I'd point it out though. It's 14 cents roughly per coin. Remember, don't risk more than you can afford to lose 10 bucks at it. I mean, your 10 bucks turn into 100 bucks. That's that makes you feel pretty good. Your 100 bucks turn into 1,000 bucks. That makes you feel pretty good. If this were to go down here, your hundred bucks going to zero, well, it sucks, but you know, hey, you tried. I'm not saying it's gonna work. It's shown the potential to do this. Two prior halvings, we've gone on runs with the crypto market. We did not make a significantly higher high though on the last run. That gives me caution that there is a large resistance hanging out right there. But that's still, that, that, that prior high right there at 79 cents, that's still like four times higher, five times higher than where we are right now. All right, there you go. What crypto broker to use? I see that question a lot. There's no one place to go. There are 700, almost 750 exchanges, 736 right now. None of these have all the coins. Yeah, look, 400 coins out of 2.4 million. Coinbase, 200 coins, 240 coins out of 2.4 you know, million. Bybit, 579. Nobody has 
even close to all the coins. Gain IO, 2,000 coins. Mech C, 1,800 coins. There's nowhere to go, nowhere that you can go trade all the coins. All right. You've got to have, if you're going to get into the stuff heavy, you're going to have to have a few different brokers just to cover most of the ones you want to be into. I just want to clear that up really quickly, make that clear for you. And these markets are, when we talk about markets, that's different currency pairs. Like Bitcoin US dollars is different from Bitcoin euros is di different from Bitcoin yen. Those are all different markets. And Bitcoin Ethereum is a different market. So when they have markets listed, that's currency pairs is the way to think of that. All right. I'm going to wrap this up for today. Hope everybody out there has a great day. I'll be around Discord, but uh, the market's not open, so I'm not going to be as glued to it today. Crypto is moving, but it's not moving. I'm not an active trader on crypto. I don't day trade crypto. I don't even, you know, I don't really even swing trade. I just kind of position trade my cryptos. So have a great day out there, everybody. Stay safe. I'll see you again Monday. I'll be back. Same bad time, same bad channel, 915 on Monday, talking about what's moving in the regular stock market. Be careful out there. The account you save, maybe your own.